Now, if you keep shooting bare fingers just like this uh, with a recurve, your fingers are going to get raw. So there's a couple things you can use to help counter that. Now they have an archery glove, which covers three fingers and goes down the back of the palm. It just goes like this. I like using these, um, but this one ain't broke in yet. And every time I pull back, it's rolling the trigger, so I just, or the string, excuse me. So I just got to keep working with it and keep getting it broke in and loosened up. This will be a good glove. I even drew our logo on the back of it. So it's a keeper. Now, another thing I found that you, uh, works is if you wear gloves hunting, you like wearing gloves hunting. And like I showed in the camouflage video, how much just the oils on your skin and the color of your skin um, can reflect sunlight, then you'll probably want to wear gloves or something to cover them up. So you can use gloves just as if you were using your fingers or a shooting glove. So this is a leather, like a suede leather. There's actually Stanley made this. It's just a, a carpenter glove. I bought them because uh, I thought I could use them for like working, um, use them in the field and hunting and stuff because they are, they are brown and they're pretty tactical. So <clears throat> another thing, I don't have one, but it's called a tab. And what it is, you slip a finger through and it's got like you got a tab on two fingers and a tab on one finger. So it's a lot le a lot more freedom, but it's just grabbing onto the string and uh, making that leather that leather stop so your fingers don't get get raw. But that's another one you can use. Now the kid is shooting any bow or any rifle is doing the same thing every time and repetition. Like I said, perfect practice, not just practice. All right. So whenever you start getting tired and you're going to get more tired shooting a recurve because you're holding more pounds back than you would a compound. So once you get tired, shake it out, go home, rest up, come back three hours later the next day and try it out again. So practice is going to make perfect with a recurve. Like I said, there's no sights. So all it is, everything becomes one and you're just looking, you stare at your target, stare at your target the whole time. If everything you let go of your release, your anchor points there, it's going to send that arrow right there. It's amazing. It's just how your natural instinct takes over. And that's what I love about the recurve. I'm going to show you guys how it all comes into play and how it looks all put together now. Let's go over some safety rules for archery in general, recurve and compound. Don't knock an arrow until you're ready to shoot. All right. So if I'm walking to my stand, I can have an arrow on there just in case I see a deer, or I see a turkey, whatever I'm going to harvest with a bow. Once I get to my stand, take it off. When I'm when I'm going up, leave my bow there and pull it up with a rope. All right. Take the arrow off because I'm not going to be shooting while I'm crawling up my stand. Once I get my bow up in the, I'm up in the stand, I get my bow up in the stand, I pull it up, then I can knock my arrow again because I'm ready to shoot. So don't knock your arrow until you're ready to shoot. Now, whenever it's back and you're drawn all the way to your anchor point, don't point your bow, your arrow, at anything you don't intend to shoot. So if there, there's a target right there and there's a building right off to my, my right, I'm not going to be aiming at the building because I don't intend to shoot that building. Make sure you're looking at your target and pointing the, in the direction of your target. All right. and the next one is know your target and what's behind your target. All right. Because with broadheads especially, they can go right through whatever you're shooting at or you might miss, go over the top or off to the side. With the rule, know your target and what's behind it. Make sure you have a backstop that will catch any arrows that if you miss your target, they won't go sailing off into the distance. And if you're in an urban environment, make sure there's no houses and no people around that can possibly be hit by any stray arrows. So you'd hate for it to hit something that you're not intending for it to hit. So those are the three rules that are pretty good uh, or that are go with archery. Now let's talk about the recurve itself. Some do's and don'ts for uh, a recurve. Some do's, you want to wax the string with a bowstring wax. Uh, there's many different types. But just, uh, pro I do it probably about 
Every other time I pull my bow out and shoot, it gets done. Wax it, it's going to keep the strength uh, and it's going to keep it from fraying out and getting too crazy. Another thing, do not store your recurve in your vehicle uh, because along with any other bow because it weakens the limbs, the heat and all that stuff. When you pull back the next time, the limbs might snap in your face. Same thing, do not dry fire a bow. When you're pulling back a bow to the rear, you can do it. Just make sure you let it back down easily. Don't pull it back and let it go with no arrow on because all that force from them limbs and that string are now going directly into these limbs. And when you're shooting an arrow, it goes into the arrow and it makes it go. It makes it go fast. So if all that force goes into these limbs, it's going to weaken them. So you might crack the limbs and it might be an internal crack or a hairline crack and you won't be able to see it, but the next time you pull back, your limbs break in your face. So those are some no-goes for uh, the recurve. And another rule for a recurve, uh, a don't rule, is never keep it strung. Uh, don't hang it up strung because that's going to weaken these limbs. Always unstring it and use a bow stringer to unstring it. It's a lot more simple and a lot easier on the recurve. And check out that video uh, if you want to learn how to string your bow and unstring it properly. Uh, one thing about a recurve, it takes a lot of practice to get real precise with this and real accurate. Starting out, it's not like a compound where it's got size since it's like a rifle. A lot of people can use a compound pretty easily. Now with a recurve, actually tip for you, do everything the same and whenever you do it the same, when you're aiming at your target, you're looking at your target and you don't take your eyes off of it. If everything's the same and everything is just fluent with you, everything's going to be one and the arrow's going to go where it needs to go. Now when you're picking out a spot on the target, let's say it's a deer, you're not just aiming at the chest cavity, you're not just aiming at the chest, you're picking out a hair, you're picking out a little, a little dark spot that the shade hit or something like that. You're aiming small so you miss the small object, you'll still hit big. All right? My dad always said, pick out a hair and that's what you're aiming at. And so that's what I do. So that's my advice to you guys. Keep looking at the target the whole time. And when you release, do not watch your arrow. Watch uh, the target you're looking at, and your arrow will go there. It might take a couple times and a few practice rounds, but you'll get to where you need to be, and you'll be able to hunt with the recurve. Like I said, it's our duties it, as a hunter to be able to hit a pie plate at all these different yardages. All right? With a compound, my maximum comfort level was 40 yards. What do you think it is with a recurve? It's a lot less. I'll, I'll hit 25, 30 maybe, and 25 is my comfort right there. So it's a lot less because it's a lot less accurate. Now, if I get practicing again, this is, I've only brought this recurve out. This is the first time that I've shot actual arrows through this recurve, but I've shot recurve my whole life, and then I got spoiled going to compound. So I'm going to try getting back to traditional ways, and Hopefully, I, I'm going to get good at it. I'm going to keep practicing, and I'm going to get to where my comfort level can be pushed out to farther ranges. So you just got to practice, perfect practice. So I'm going to be doing some here now. I'm going to be aiming for the top right of the big circle. Now it's raining, I don't want to take my camera out there, but there they are, four arrows, pretty close to center on them circles. So that's at 10 yards, so then what I would do is I'd move over there, because how I work, if I can hit in my pie plate, all my arrows, and I got four arrows with me right now, then I'll move on to the next yardage. And if I drop back, if I can't do it, then I'll fall back to the yardage. So if I go to 15 yards, I can't put all my arrows in a pie plate, I'm going to go back to 10 and keep practicing.